Gaur Trimanande Haribo Namal Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirase Shashunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Preshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Starting, did we read 45? Okay, 46. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 11, The Childhood Pastimes of Krishna, beginning from text number 46. Swam swam vatsa kulam sarve Payai ishyanta ekada Gatva Jalashai Abhyasham Payayo 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 Itva Papu Jalam Swam Swam Vatsa Kulam Sarve Payayashyanta Ekada Jadva Jala Shaya Vyasham Payayitva Papu Jalam Swam Swam Vatsa Kulam Sarve Payayas Yantak Ekada Gadva Jala Shaya Vyasham Payayat Vapapur Jalam Swam Swam Own Respective Vatsakulam The Group of Calves Sarve All the Boys and Krishna and Balaram Payayasyanta Desiring to have them drink water Ekada one day, Gatva, going, Jala Asaya Abhyasham, 
near the water tank. Payayitva. After allowing the animals to drink water. Papujalam. They also drank water. Translation. One day, all the boys, including Krishna and Balaram, each boy taking his own group of calves, brought the calves to a reservoir of water, desiring to allow them to drink. After the animals drank water, the boys drank water there also. There's no purport. We'll read the next verse. Text number 47. Te tatra dadrush rishur bala maha sattvam avastitam tatra sur braja nirbinam gere shingam eve chutam. Translation Right by the reservoir, the, the boys saw a gigantic body resembling a mountain peak, broken and struck down by a thunderbolt. They were afraid even to see such a huge living being. Text 48. That great-bodied demon was named Bakasura. He had assumed the body of a duck with a very sharp beak. Having come there, he immediately swallowed Krishna. Text number 49. When Balaram and the other boys saw that Krishna had been devoured by the gigantic duck, they became almost unconscious, like senses without life. Purport. Although Balarama can do everything, because of intense affection for his brother, he was momentarily bewildered. A similar thing is stated to have happened in connection with Rukmini Harana, the kidnapping of Rukmini. When Krishna after kidnapping Rukmini, was attacked by all the kings. Rukmini was momentarily bewildered until the Lord took the proper steps. Omagyana uh. Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanye na Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Sri Gara Sri Yata Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha he Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Korange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha kaupata rubyasya kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavan ebyo vaishnavibyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda 
Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Translation again. When Balaram and the other boys saw that Krishna had been devoured by the gigantic duck, they became almost unconscious, like senses without life. So, we're hearing about Lord Krishna's childhood pastimes in Vrindavan, and we're hearing how Lord Krishna is going into the forest every day with the cowherd boys, taking the, the calves, taking the, sm the, young, the smaller cows with them to the forest. And uh, in the course of their time in the forest, different demons are coming, trying to kill Krishna. Actually, Baka, this demon Bakasura, who's come in the form of a duck. You know, ducks can be very, very fierce sometimes. If they attack you, they have these beaks, which they'll bite you, they'll get you with their beaks, and it can be very painful if they bite you. So, you could just imagine what this Bakasura demon was like because he's described as being gigantic, like a mountain, right? This is a body resembling a mountain peak, broken and struck down by a thunderbolt. So, sometimes thunderbolt may strike the peak of the mountain and knock off the top part of the mountain. So like that, this Bakasura is compared like that very horrible and the demon the, this Bakasura immediately comes and attacks Krishna and swallows Krishna so Baka is he's the brother of Putana when Putana was killed by Krishna so maybe her brother must have heard about it and certainly be eager to get revenge. You killed my sister. Brothers and sisters may fight with each other, but if, any, if anybody gets my sister, the brother will come and the brother will, what are you doing to my sister? I'm her brother, I have a right to hit her. You're not her brother, you have no right touching my sister. Like that, so. Uh, Bakasura, come and swallowed Krishna. And Lord Balaram is there along with Lord Krishna and all the cowherd boys. And when Lord Balaram sees that Krishna has been devoured by this big duck, Balaram is said he becomes almost unconscious. Now, how is it possible Balaram? could be bewildered like this because Balarama is also the Supreme Lord and he knows the identity of Lord Krishna. He knows Lord Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. So he knows Lord Krishna cannot be killed, he cannot be, his, that his body is completely pure and transcendental and spiritual. So how could anything happen to Lord Krishna, but still, out of intense affection for Lord Krishna, Lord Balaram, seeing Lord Krishna swallowed by the duck, becomes almost unconscious. I, naturally, it's expected like that, that somebody you love very much, somebody you're very dear to, and when they leave you, when they're taken from you, go away from you, you'll feel greatly pained. So Lord Balaram, seeing Lord Krishna devoured by the duck, 
he, he, naturally he's very worried and very worried, almost unconscious, you know, of course what, what he could have done, he could have just come and attacked the demon, but, but apparently it all happened so quickly. These ducks can move quite fast and this big duck came quickly and swallowed Krishna before Balaram could do anything about it, before even Krishna could do anything about it. This duck taking Krishna inside his body. So Balarama, Lord Balaram is bewildered because of his intense affection for Lord Krishna. Balarama is the Supreme Lord, but he's coming, of course, in the role of the servant of the Lord. He's the servant of Lord Krishna. Lord Balaram serves Krishna in all the different rasas. Even in Madhurya Rasa, Lord Balaram appears as Ananga Manjari, the younger sister of Radharani, and he gives service to Krishna in that way. So Balaram, sometimes he's the servant of Krishna, sometimes he's the friend of Krishna, and sometimes he's like the parent or the guardian of Krishna. So we can see in this case, the, you know, the, the friendship relationship because the two of them they're, go, they're going into the forest with the other cowherd boys the cowherd boys and Krishna and Balaram they're all uh, what's uh, Sakiras right friendship they're friends with each other friends are and uh, in the mood of the, in this friendship they're, they're equals so Krishna and Balaram are playing the part of ordinary cowherd boys. Uh, these demons have been sent by Kamsa. Kamsa knew that the child who was born to kill him had taken birth. So the child who was going to kill him had already taken birth. So Kamsa sent all of his different demonic friends to kill all the young children in Braja. So that's one of the reasons why Putana had come there. She had killed many other young children. She was very demonic. And similarly, Baka. You know, they're born, they're demons. They're born for this purpose of simply giving trouble to the devotees and to the godly people. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the divine and the demonic nature, right? So, Abhijatashya. Abhijatashya means from the beginning of life, they have this quality. And similarly, the, the, those with the demonic nature, lust, anger, hatred, these kind of things, the, these are the qualities of the demon and from the very beginning of life they cultivate this kind of mentality. Uh, what is the difference between the devotee and the demon? The difference is that devotee will be obedient to the scriptures but the demons always go against the scriptures. They always oppose, they always do the other, whatever's in the scripture, they'll do the opposite. So the scriptures speak about ahimsa and, and uh, being peaceful and non-violent and giving respect to others. So the demons are just the opposite. They're very angry, very envious, very violent. And so Bakasura comes and he immediately tries to f swallow up Krishna. Well, he, he did it. He actually swallowed Krishna. And so Lord Balaram is overwhelmed that, oh no, Krishna is gone. It, you know, it becomes almost unconscious. So in the purport, we're told that a similar situation happened at the time of the Rukmini Harana, the kidnapping of Rukmini. Lord Krishna had come 
to kidnap Rukmini. Rukmini had actually sent a letter to Dwarka because Sishupala had arranged the marriage of uh, Ruk, Rukma. Rukma had arranged the marriage of Rukmini to Sishupal, right? Rukmini's brother, Rukma, was a friend of Sishupal, meaning they were not friends with Krishna. Sishupal was always envious of Krishna because Krishna always had more than Sishupal. Sishupal was born into great opulence, great wealth, a great kingdom, very powerful. He had so much opulence, but he didn't have as much as Krishna. You know, sometimes you're in that situation, you're trying to do well, you want, maybe you want to be the top student or something, and somebody always beats you. You know, they always get more than you. You think, ah, you know, you, you, feel, you feel some envy towards them. So Sishupala's nature was envy. He had very envious mentality towards Lord Krishna. Because Lord Krishna always had more and could defeat him. So Ruk Rukma had arranged the marriage of Rukmini to Sishupal. And Rukmini had heard about Lord Krishna because Narada Muni had come there and he told Rukmini about the glories of Lord Krishna. So when Rukmini heard all about Lord Krishna, she was thinking, oh, how wonderful. Oh, what a wonderful husband he would make. Oh, I would love to have a husband like him. You know, just like young girls, they hear about a man. You know, young girls, they have their heroes, their movie stars. Sometimes even young girls, they like football players or sportsmen. And they'll have their pictures on their bedroom. And in this way, they live in dreams about this famous man. So Rukmini, she was the daughter of the king of Vidarbha. So she was in a royal family, a very great family, a noble family. But her brother wants to arrange her marriage to Sishupal. And the father can't do anything about it. Because the older brother, very powerful, father's old. And the job of getting the, the, the daughter married, getting the sister married, goes to the brother. The brother's the one to arrange so he selects Sishupal. You're, we're going to get you married to Sishupal. He'll be a good husband for you. And Sishupal is also a king. He's a noble man. And he's also wealthy. And he's powerful. But Rukmini had heard about Krishna from Narada Muni. So, you know, Hindu society, Indian society, sometimes it's like that. The young girl doesn't have a lot of freedom when it comes to marriage. Young women, it's, they're not given independence. The marriage is arranged usually by the parents. And it's actually better. It's actually better that the parents arrange the marriage for the girl. Because they know the mentality of the girl, and they can the girls, young young women tend to be sentimental, and they, you know, oh he looks nice, oh he doesn't look very nice, like that. You know, they look more at the external features rather than the internal features. And so when the young girl gets married to a man just based on the external features then it won't be very successful for long. After some time, you know, they start to have difficulties because internally they're very different. So it's better that the marriages are arranged by the parents. So in this case, it was Ruk Rukma, the brother, eldest brother of Rukmini. 
she he arranged the marriage and it was a big marriage all the kings come because Sishupal and Rukmini they're both from royal families so it's a very big event and just like sometimes we see in England when the, the king or when the Queen of England's uh, son or grandchildren when they get married they have a royal wedding very big affair you know so Rukmini was to be married it was to be a very big affair and so many kings came from all over and big, uh, big program is arranged and Rukmini what does she do she writes a letter to Krishna you know she didn't have email or mobile phone to contact Krishna she had to and she didn't even have a pigeon in Vrindavan Radha and Krishna they send messages to each other by parrots the parrots will carry the messages from one to another but Rukmini she didn't have parrots either but she had a brahmana she had a faithful brahmana there who was her who was close to her so she requested this brahmana to take her letter to Dwarka and give it to Lord Krishna and in her letter Rukmini wrote expressing her love for Krishna and her desire to marry Lord Krishna and she also told Lord Krishna that if I'm not able to achieve you as a husband in this life then I'm prepared to undergo austerities for many lifetimes in order to achieve you as a husband so she expressed her intense strong love to get Krishna for a husband and she also told Krishna she said if you can come here and she gave Krishna the details that they're going to take me to the Durga temple and when I go to that Durga temple before the marriage that would be a good time if you come then you can get me you can take me away <laughs> so Rukmini was giving the secrets to Lord Krishna encouraging him so that he could come so the brahmana went all the way to Dwarka and delivered the letter to Lord Krishna it's very nicely described in Srimad Bhagavatam how Lord Krishna talks to the brahmana and he asks the brahmana because Namo Brahmana Devaya Go Brahmana the brahmanas are all very dear to Lord Krishna so Lord Krishna was naturally concerned for the welfare of the Brahmana and before he even read the letter he didn't you know letters coming from Rukmini oh oh a letter from Rukmini oh oh quick what does she say no Krishna said oh, the Brahmana has come Krishna gives all respect to the Brahmana how are you my dear Brahmana friend are you executing the principles of Brahminical culture without any difficulty very important that the brahmana has to keep the brahminical culture right brahmanas cannot work for someone they don't take salary they can do worship of the deity or they can teach people to worship the deity they can study the scripture or they can teach the scripture and they can accept charity and they can give charity so that's all they're supposed to do they're not supposed to work so Lord Krishna wanted to know are you satisfied are you comfortable in executing your Brahminical duties and the Brahmana was happy yes I'm fine I have no problems no difficulty so then Lord Krishna read the letter from Rukmini and he heard about the marriage the details of the marriage so Lord Krishna decides he will go there and he goes there he just brings his chariot and uh, he comes he doesn't bring an army with him he just comes on his own with the, the chariot maybe Daruka does Daruka go with him I can't remember yeah yeah Daruka goes also so because 
I was wondering, does Daruka go? Because at a certain point, yeah, of course, they go to Krishna's there, and all the kings are there, and Rukmini's coming, and she's got her sari over her face, and she's going to the Durga temple, because the idea, you go to the temple of Durga, and get blessings for the marriage, right? You have to get the blessings also of the, demi, the different devas, although she's a devotee of Lord Krishna, she gets the black, goes to the Durga Mandap and gets the blessings there and she's just coming and just at that time Lord Krishna appears. And Lord Krishna comes and immediately picks up Rukmini, puts her on the chariot and goes off. And of course all the other kings, all Sishupal and all the other kings who go, oh, they were very shocked. The audacity of Lord Krishna the audacity of that cowherd boy, Krishna, that he's come here just like a, a wolf is stealing a lamb away in the presence of the, 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 the shepherd. It's a very outrageous thing. And so that all the Kshatriya kings, they all go after Krishna and they're all chasing Krishna. Here, here it says that uh, Prabhupada writes that Rukmini was stunned by all the kings because Krishna was kidnapping her. Rukmini was momentarily bewildered until the Lord took the proper steps. So Rukmini of course is also no ordinary personality. She is the goddess of fortune. She's always the consort of the Lord. So she, sometimes I, we read also that when Krishna was driving away because the kings were chasing, so he gave the reins to Rukmini. And he said, you drive. And Krishna picked up his bow and he was killing all the kings who were chasing him. So Rukmini was also able to drive, a, you know, a, a team of horses in, on the chariot. So she was, although she was a young girl, she was trained in these kind of things somehow. But the, the significant point in this in this particular verse is that Balarama and also Rukmini that they can become stunned due to their intense love and attachment to Lord Krishna because they love Krishna so much. Rukmini is described, she's, she's on, has a, the highest love for Krishna. Just like Prahlad Maharaj is a prima bhakta. Rukmini also had prima bhakti for Lord Krishna. She had intense love for Krishna. Prema bhakti, right? How do you get prem when you're uh, premanjana charita bhakti vilo chanena santa sadaiva redayeshu vilo kayanti yam shama sundaram achinjagunam swarupam Govinda Madipursam Tamaham Bajamin. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Krishna Shamsundar himself, with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotee sees in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. So Rukmini's eyes had that love. They're, they were always full of love for Krishna. Very intense love for Krishna. Just like Mother Yashoda also, you know, she's also on the highest level. And Balarama, of course, Balarama loves Krishna more than anybody else. He also has, in, although he's not different from Krishna, but he's come as the servant of Krishna. So, brothers always attach, they have affection for each other. The young brother is Krishna. Balaram is Dauji, right? He's the older brother. We say, Dauji Kanaya, Dau, Dauji Kabaya, Krishna Kanaya. Dauji Kabaya, Krishna Kanaya. There's a temple in Braja of Dauji. When we go there, we sing that song. Dauji Kabaya, Krishna Kanaya. Krishna Kanaya. Krishna is the younger brother. Dauji means the older brother. So the older brother is to take care of the younger brother. And 
Balarama sees his younger brother has been swallowed by Bakasura. Oh no! Where is, what is that? So he feels very concerned. So, but of course he, he, he momentarily he's concerned. Because of his, his intense love and affection for Krishna. That if we think of Krishna as the Supreme Lord, if Balaram would just think of Krishna as the Supreme Lord, then he wouldn't worry, he wouldn't care about him. But then you won't have that same loving feeling for him. So he, the, he wants to, he wants to exp enjoy that loving relationship, that rasa. Just like as devotees, we want to serve Krishna. Mother Yashoda wants to care for Krishna. And she gets her pleasure out of trying to protect Krishna and care for him, to wash him and clean him. We heard our mother Yashoda was bathing and washing Krishna. But, but Krishna is always pure. Krishna is never contaminated. But out of her intense love, in the mood of being Krishna's mother, she wants to care for him. So similarly also Lord Balaram in the mood of being the older brother, he's also concerned for Krishna because he is enjoying this sakiras, that they're friends with each other, they help each other, they care for each other. So Lord Balaram momentarily stunned. Similarly, Rukmini, when she saw Krishna kidnap her, pick her up on the chariot, and then all the kings come after him, and then all the kings, are, they're all coming with their horses and their, their weapons, want to fight Krishna. And Krishna's got Rukmini on the... So naturally, Rukmini... Oh, oh! You know, Rukmini may not have expected all of this. That there would be so much opposition to her being taken away by Lord Krishna. So momentarily, she's also bewildered. She's also bewildered. She's worried about Lord Krishna, that maybe these kings will harm Krishna because there's so many of them. They're all coming after Krishna. There's so many of these kings. So naturally she would worry about Krishna that, oh, how will he ever be safe? That they're all coming. They're trying to kill Krishna. So devotee always wants to to pre protect Krishna, to give service, right? We don't want to take service from Krishna. We like devotees mudas to give service to Krishna. Just like Raghunath Das Goswami was uh, doing his meditation at Radhakund and he was sitting meditating at Radhakund and it was you know, jungle everywhere. And so sometimes a wild animal would come. So when the wild animal like a tiger would come, Lord Krishna would come and chase the tiger away. Don't disturb my devotee. He's meditating. And another time in the hot sun, Raghunath Das is sitting there meditating and Radharani comes and holds a, a piece of cloth over his head to protect him from the sun. So when, the, when Sanatan Goswami saw this, then he told Raghunath, you can't do like this. You're taking service. Krishna, and Radhar they're coming to serve you. You're supposed to be their servant. So the devotees want to give service. They don't like to take service. But there's always that competition. Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala. He likes to give service to his devotees. The devotees t keep Krishna in their heart and Krishna keeps the devotees in his heart. The devotees always thinking to give service to Krishna and Krishna likes to give service to his devotees. It's a transcendental competition. So, Rukmini is certainly worried here, seeing her 
seeing Lord Krishna being attacked by so many other kings, she's worried for his safety, for his welfare, for his protection. And similarly, Lord Balaram is very concerned that, oh, Lord Krishna has been swallowed by this Bakasura. How terrible! What will happen? Krishna has gone into the, this. So, this bewilderment by this, this, these pastimes, these lila, cause the bewilderment of the devotees and it increases their intense affection and attachment for him. We know that the gopis, they cursed Lord Brahma that you made these eyes which blink. We cannot see Lord Krishna, so we feel separation from him. So feeling that separation from Krishna is very painful for the devotee. So similarly, seeing Bakasura swallow Lord Krishna, then Balarama also would be feeling separation from Krishna. So this this is, this is all the, the lila, that these different demons who are performing these different activities, actually they're all very special souls who've taken birth in these demonic bodies just to perform these different pastimes. Because by having these different pastimes, the devotee's love for Krishna is increased. We feel more, more affection for Krishna. When he's in danger, when he's in difficult, we, want, we will be more concerned and our love will increase for Krishna. So Krishna performs these different leelas to help us to increase our love and attachment for him. So we'll hear more tomorrow. Any question? Oh, when a relative departs from the world, we will feel separation from them, we will lament the absence of a dear loved family member. So how to overcome that feeling of separation and feeling of lamentation? Therefore, it's recommended we should chant the holy name. We have to chant the holy name and we have to also hear, you have to hear the teachings of Lord Krishna, particularly the uh, second chapter of Bhagavad Gita where Lord Krishna describes uh, knowledge of the soul, describing the difference between the body and the soul. And we hear also about the law of reincarnation. We have to hear Lord Krishna's explanation of death, how death is simply the change of the body. But especially the loud chanting of the holy name is very powerful and very effective in helping to give us comfort in the difficult situation of losing our dearly, our dear, dearly beloved family members. So the chanting, kirtan of the, the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, very powerful to help us to overcome our grief. By chanting the holy name of Krishna, then we will awaken also our spiritual consciousness and we will understand what is actually taking place. By chanting the holy name, by doing devotional service, automatically we wake, awaken knowledge and also detachment. Knowledge about the body and the soul and detachment from the material existence. 
So these two things automatically come when we're engaged in devotional service. So especially, you have to loud kirtan, chanting the holy name, and read Bhagavad Gita and hear the knowledge from the scriptures will help us to come to the transcendental platform to help us to overcome the grief. Yeah. Yes, right. Uh, devotee's husband left the body. So, it's important to have association with devotees and in the association of devotees, when your husband or somebody, family member leaves a body, then we should take the association of devotees and we should increase, greatly increase our hearing and chanting. It's very important. When Prabhupada departed from the world, I remember in Vrindavan, for many days we had kirtan and classes, extra kirtan, extra classes, many devotees all coming and speaking and glorifying Prabhupada. Like that, more kirtan, more people speaking, glorifying Krishna and Krishna's devotees. To make a, a young woman love a man she's never, she's never seen must be very difficult. So how could Rukmini love Krishna? Rukmini loved Krishna because she, she'd heard about him from Narada Muni. And she'd heard about his wonderful qualities and activities. And this was enough to convince Rukmini that, this was a, that she didn't want to marry any other man. That no other man would really satisfy her. No other man was eligible to be the husband of her. Because remember, Rukmini is the goddess of fortune and she is the property of the Supreme Lord. So she understands who is.